And we're back to checking out some more comprehensive benchmarks using Raspberry Pi OS, a 32-bit architecture width versus 64-bit. Thanks to Pharonix again for running these benchmarks. And last time we talked about 64-bit and 32-bit operating systems and what type of performance gains we could expect in the previous video. And now we're here with more benchmarks to go through. I'm excited to see the performance gains we get out of using a 64-bit operating system, but let's first talk about what these benchmarks were ran on. Basically, the biggest difference here is Raspbian 11 versus Raspbian 11. It's also called Debian 11. Don't let that confuse you, but 32-bit versus 64-bit. This is on a very similar processor with a very similar motherboard using the same chipset memory, disk, space, graphics, and really the biggest difference here is going to be the kernel is compiled for a different architecture here, ARCH64 versus ARM v7, which is awesome because it will give it some access to some instruction sets that you can't run on the 32-bit architecture with. We can see here we have targets for ARCH64 and target for ARM Linux. Let's talk about what's being ran here for a minute. We have a bunch of flags here for the compiler for 32-bit versus 64-bit, including the kernel details and then the processor details, as well as security details here at the end. You can also check this benchmark out for yourself at openbenchmarking.org. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to check that out. And now let's check out the results. All right, first off, we need to understand what we're looking at here. So what you see is a graph that can has bars which go on either side. If it's on the right-hand side, that means it's a win for the 64-bit architecture width and by how much percentage-wise. And then if the bar is on the left-hand side, that means it's a win for the 32-bit width architecture. And we'll talk about why some of these are the way they are, but let's check out some. For the very first test here, stress NG matrix math, turns out the 32-bit won out on that one. But for the most part, I'll just tell you right now, 64-bit wins out overall. If we look at things such as WebP image encoding, looks like there's a 3.4% performance gain on that test. Going up, we start getting into about 6% here doing the Pi Performance Go test. And using the Pi Performance Ray test, we have an 8% gain in for the 64-bit version of the operating system. We see Node.js V8 web tooling benchmark actually wins out on the 32-bit version by 10%. And now we're pretty much walking away in the 64-bit version with things such as socket activity under the stress NG test, MMAP and rotate in graphics magic, winning out close to 20%, 19% there. We have stress NG atomic actually going to the 32-bit version, 20% better there. We'll keep going up and now we're starting to get some really nice gains. Stress NG forking, 37.4. Lame M3 encoding, wave to MP3, 42.7% performance gain there. OS bench creating processes, 52%. Now, a few very specific tests here. Liquid DSP of varying types, up around 50% gain in the 32-bit version. And before we get too far up here, let's check out some of the more modest gains. OS Bench launching programs, apparently 60% of a performance gain there. The Stress NG, Crypto, 87%. This is kind of what we saw last time. Aircrack NG, 82% better for the 32-bit version. Now, for the most part, anytime you see the 32-bit winning out is more than likely due to the fact that the type of test ran isn't really taking advantage of some of the 64-bit architecture with instruction sets. So those programs or compilations could probably use some improvement in order to take advantage of the other architecture. But either way, let's keep going up to get some crazy performance gains here. Now we're talking system bench on the CPU, 1,380% up. And now we're getting above 100% in the next set of categories here. All the NCNN tests with the CPU are going between 100 to 250%. And the system bench RAM memory, 271%. What we saw last time, pretty much the same. And a few of the etc. pack reaching between 300 and 430%. Quite amazing what kind of gain and performance you can get with just using 64-bit. Now, if we really take the averages overall, the various different tests and compilations that are that have been done with this extended benchmarking test, we probably get an average in around 30% like we had predicted in the previous videos. It still seems to pretty much hold. And if we look down here, in these two columns, we have 32-bit and 64-bit. This tells you the times elapsed for each of the tests and which one won out and which one did not. For example, 
OS bench launching programs. The score here is 288 versus 457 for the 32-bit. And anything in green means that particular column won out. So we can see pretty much across the board down, 64-bit takes almost all the wins. But let's talk about how many wins there are actually are for 32-bit versus the 64-bit because we have that information as well in a nice, neat pie chart. At the end here, we have the number of first place finishes. For 64-bit, 110 tests or right around 86% of the tests score in favor for the 64-bit with architecture. It's amazing what just changing an operating system can do for you. And then 32-bit comes in with 18 wins or about 14% of the tests. And that's just fascinating. As we discussed before, most of these gains are coming out of the fact that the 64-bit with architectures is allowing for the use of improved instruction sets that are more efficient and even access to instruction sets that use 64-bit entirely. Therefore, the 32-bit can't even access them in the same architecture. Overall, this isn't going to make too much of a difference for your everyday needs such as web browsing, video playing, recording, playing video games, all that fun stuff isn't really going to change much. You're not going to see some huge improvement happening to your system. But when it comes to compilations and testing certain things, there is going to be a clear improvement. So it might be worth to update that Raspberry Pi up to a 64-bit operating system, especially now that it's available officially under Raspbian. Well, let me know what you think about the results in the comment section below. Also, make sure to subscribe below and hit that notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. Also, catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.